Welcome to Game Shack. Today we're talking about some 32-bit light gun games. And who doesn't love a good light gun game? I always love these kinds of games, Joe. And there's actually some really good ones out there that I think we're going to show you. There are, and we're looking at games for the Saturn and the PlayStation. And like usual, Dave's going to cover the PlayStation. I'm going to cover the Saturn stuff, so let's just get going. Virtua Cop on the Saturn by Sega is, of course, based on the arcade game of the same name. The Saturn version is pretty faithful, though the graphics aren't quite as sharp and the polygons are a tad less robust. Still, it's a pretty fun game that was included with the stunner gun when I got it one Christmas, and it can be played with two players at the same time. You can also purchase this game on its own without the gun. There's only three stages here, but you can play them in any order that you want. So many choices. Yeah, it's pretty short, but it's still fun. However, it's definitely not something that you want to pay full price for. Basically, you're shooting the bad guys and trying not to shoot the tons of innocent people that keep popping up. Stay down, idiots! Don't you know that there are bullets flying around? Jeez. You can collect new weapons that last for a limited amount of time, but there's not much extra health laying around. I like the graphics that zoom in on the bad guys to show how close they are to shooting at you. The music is pretty good, and it gets better as you play, that is, if you play the stages in order. It puts up a good challenge considering its length. This one also tracks your gun on screen live without flashing the screen at times. How they do this, I have absolutely no idea, but I think it's cool. A year later, Virtua Cop 2 came out on the Saturn. This one is pretty much more of the same with a few improvements. The visuals are improved a bit and feature more color and more interesting locations. You'll often be inside cars or on a subway or things like that. You also have the ability to choose your path halfway through each stage. This adds a bit of replayability since there are still only three stages. Other than that, there's not really much that can be considered new. There's still lots of different weapons to collect and innocent people to avoid shooting. The music is decent and there's more of it, but it does kind of get boring being a Virtua Cop. Honestly, I'd rather shoot Virtua Zombies or something. Time Crisis on the PlayStation was Namco's answer to Virtua Cop and is only compatible with a gun con. Turns out the president's daughter has been kidnapped by this scary guy. You play as secret agent Richard Miller, who's sent in to ruin his day. Like Virtua Cop, you move from scene to scene shooting bad guys. But instead of shooting outside the screen to quickly reload, you instead duck for cover. This also takes you out of the enemy's line of fire. You'll even need to use it to avoid getting crushed by things like cars or whatnot from time to time. Once you're done reloading, you swing back out to shoot some more bad guys. Do this again and again and then move on to the next scene. You use a button on the gun con to control your ducking and your firing. There are only three stages, but each stage has multiple areas. You've also got to be careful because you're on a time limit. Both you and the criminals got other things to do and places to be. There's also another mode with completely new stages where you get to shoot up hotel employees who just want you to leave. The game can get extremely difficult. It doesn't help that you're constantly ducking back and forth. Once you re-emerge, it takes a half a second or so to get reoriented to exactly where all your enemies are and that can lead to your doom. Only with repeated playthroughs will you learn where the enemies all are in order to beat them. Still, overall it's a great game. The graphics don't have much detail, but they do have a certain charm to them. The music is also great and really helps make you feel tense. It's the first in the series, so it's okay if it's a little rough around the edges. Action! 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 Later on, Time Crisis Project Titan was released. Richard Miller has been framed for the assassination of the leader of a fictional country, so now you need to shoot everybody up and make them pay. It's Miller time! The gameplay here is almost exactly the same as the first game. This time, however, you're occasionally given the option to move to a different area when you're ducking for cover. You'll need to do this a lot while fighting bosses. Otherwise, it's good old time crisis with a new set of stages. The graphics seem a little cleaner this time around, and I like that. And again, you're ducking for cover after every six shots you fire, if not even more often. 
and it still puts up quite a bit of challenge in the story mode. It's a good game and I recommend it. Area 51 on the Saturn is a port of the Midway arcade game. This is an FMV light gun game where you need to kill all of the aliens that have taken over the Area 51 base. That'll teach the government for being shady with their aliens. It's a pretty basic game and that's fine. Just shoot all of the aliens but don't shoot your team members who are dressed in blue. Unfortunately, they like to get in your way quite a bit so be careful. If you do shoot them, then you lose some health if not your life. Along the way, there are crates to shoot which can give you grenades and even weapon power-ups. The grenade obviously will destroy all the enemies currently on screen. There's also tons of yellow barrels and crates during any given level that you can shoot for points. Visually, things are pretty rough here with the video suffering from some pretty low quality compression. The music keeps your heart pumping but otherwise it's nothing special. Jen really liked this game a lot in the arcade when she was younger and was happy to play the Saturn version. I mean, come on, everyone likes to play the Sega Saturn. No! Game over! Not much later, Midway graced the world with maximum force. This one's a lot like Area 51 with its FMV based gameplay. However, it seems a lot slower and slightly less fun than Area 51. One thing that I really do like though is that a lot of the backgrounds are destructible with your weapons which is really impressive considering that the game uses FMV for its graphics. Also there's lots of innocent people here who just love to run into the middle of the scene like they can't hear gunshots all around them or something. The video and audio here are both pretty bad and honestly I can't recommend this one too much. Area 51 on the PlayStation plays just like the Saturn version and uses the justifier only. It's also sometimes called the enforcer, but here the full motion video quality is much nicer. Not only is there a lot more detail in the video, but the video itself is bigger on the screen and there's far less compression artifacts. Look at Jen playing the PlayStation version. She's way happier than she was playing the cruddy Saturn version. Man, the PlayStation version's so awesome! Definitely happier than I'll ever be playing this, that's for sure. If you're gonna play Area 51, the PlayStation really is the best choice as long as you have the justifier. Now blast some alien ass off this planet! The PlayStation version of Maximum Force is the same story as Area 51. Much better video quality making it much more enjoyable. Well, as enjoyable as an FMB light gun game can be, I suppose. But this time you can play with either the Justifier or the Gun Con. It's not all bad. Oh crap! I just shot the innocent metal detector guy! That could have been me! I love metal detecting! But then again, I'm not dumb enough to do it in the middle of a giant gunfight. Anyway, check out the PlayStation versions if you like Midway's FMB light gun games. Want a game to show off the massive power of the PlayStation? Well then, Gun 2 Western Front June 1944 probably isn't your game. This Japanese only game uses the gun con and takes place in, you guessed it, June of 1944. It seems you're a one man army blasting down Nazis right in their own bases. Your life bar is basically the timer at the top of the screen. It's continuously counting down but each successful kill adds a bit of time. You shoot everything from infantry to planes and tanks. If you hold down the button on the gun con, you can also launch an RPG, but only if the bar happens to be green at the time. Of course, each level ends in a boss fight. Almost everything about this game feels very primitive. The graphics are very simplistic and the animations of the infantry are quite odd. They really didn't bother to apply any polish here and it's all extremely basic. Because of this, it starts to get boring after four stages or so. Overall, it's no wonder why this never saw a wider release. The music is interesting, but I don't think this is the kind of stuff that was at the top of any country's charts in June of 1944. 
Crypt Killer on the Saturn by Konami is based on the arcade game. This one is actually pretty cool. You get to select from a bunch of different stages in the beginning. Now you're on your way to find the Eyes of Guidance and kill some crypts. The stages are all 3D, but most of the enemies are 2D sprites. Everything is extremely blocky. Still, it's pretty fun to play. Twice in each stage, you'll be able to choose your path. Some of the rounds repeat in the different stages, so choose wisely. And of course, at the end of all the rounds is a boss fight. There's lots of different guns to collect which can help out a bit. You also have a stock of bombs which you can use by pressing the start button. The game often likes to tell you what it thinks is a good time to use the bomb. Yeah, it's definitely an arcade game. There's some good concepts in here, but sadly the 32-bit generation just wasn't up to the task of making this game look as good as it could. I mean, it looks like Atari 2600 graphics in a 3D world. The music is really nice though, and there's quite a few different tracks. Unfortunately, it never came out in the US for the Saturn. Crypt Killer is also on the PlayStation and you can only use the Justifier. It's pretty much the same as the Saturn version, only much better in its visual presentation. The textures all have a higher resolution and overall the game looks much less blocky. That's not to say that this is an amazing looking game or anything, because it isn't. It's still pretty primitive looking even for its time especially with the wonky camera movements that are all over the place. One weird thing is that I found that my aim kept drifting to the right the more and more I played the game. I could still reliably hit my enemies just as long as I aim slightly to the left of my targets. For that reason alone, the Saturn version plays better, but this one isn't quite as ugly. Alright, we're back, Dave. Are you enjoying these light gun games? I am enjoying them, Joe. They are a kick in the you-know-what. Um, you can say you? it. Can I? Kick in the ass. In the ass. Yeah. I All love right. shooting, you know, at the screen and stuff like that. It yeah. Just, it makes me feel empowered. Exactly. This is the kind of motion control that I actually like. Indeed. <laughs> if you could call it motion control. I suppose. But I it's mean... not really. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back into it. Point Blank from Namco on the PlayStation is a fantastic port of their arcade game. One or two players can play at the same time in this one and it only works with Namco's GunCon. Basically, you play as one of two doctors on an insane hunting trip at a shooting gallery or something. The gameplay consists of a lot of small stages and there are a lot of them. Before each stage, you're given the rules like don't shoot the bombs and be sure to hit at least 25 of this or that. Each stage lasts between 5 and 25 seconds at the most. During that time, you need to make sure to do as well as you can as fast as you can. Immediately after the time runs out, you get to see if you've met your quota. Each time you fail your quota or shoot something that you're not supposed to, you lose a life. There are a ton of different stages here resulting in a lot of variety and I really love that. If you select the arrange mode, then there's even more stuff to do. Like a quest mode, which is basically an RPG. You get to explore towns, talk to people, buy things from shops, and yes, even get into random battles. These battles are just the stages from the arcade mode. Moving around using the gun is kind of weird, but it's intuitive. The graphics are colorful and funny, and the music goes perfectly with the game. This is an absolute must-have for the PlayStation. Point Blank 2 came out the next year in 1999. This one is basically more of the same with lots of new stages. Like this one where you need to keep a can from dropping while you're in space. That shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. Some of the old stages have been brought over and given a fresh coat of paint, like shooting the criminals, but now you move forward. The quest mode is back, and this time it takes place at a theme park where of course you need to rescue a princess. You go through different things like a haunted house and fight occasional battles. Even though this is more of the same, it still feels new enough to own. Two years after that, Point Blank 3 was finally released. Once again, it's more of the same, and once again, that's a good thing. Plenty of new stages here to test your aim and reflexes. This one doesn't have a quest mode at all, and that's okay as I really don't miss it. I like some of the new ideas like shooting soccer balls into the goal. 
Or like this one where you need to match the face of the Namco character shown and shoot it. I like it because it has a Splatterhouse mask in addition to stuff like Mappy and Dig Dug. You really can't go wrong with any of the games in the Point Blank series. My favorite is probably Point Blank 2. But if you see any of them for an acceptable price, pick it up if you don't already own it. Oh Bakyun came out in 2000 and it's a Gun Con only title. This one was released in Europe as Ghoul Panic but never came out in the US. I bought it because it's very similar to the Point Blank series. In fact it plays by almost identical rules, but the stages are often longer and a bit more modernized with polygons and the such. It also constantly switches resolutions from interlaced to progressive and back for no reason whatsoever making it very hard to record footage of this game. And there are a ton of loading screens everywhere. Still, it's a fun new take on the series and I enjoy it. Mighty Hits on the Saturn was a game that was never released in the US. This is the PAL version here running on my NTSC console. Honestly, the best way to describe this game is that it's a poor man's point blank. Basically, it's full of short minigames to complete. There's three different levels of difficulty here. Before each minigame, you're told what you've got to do in order to clear the stage. The stages are usually timed and you need to do things like pop balloons or some other such nonsense. It's actually somewhat enjoyable, but it gets hard really, really fast. One thing that I like though is that you can have your sight on screen at all times that indicates where your light gun is pointed. Now this may seem like cheating and I suppose in some stages like this one it really is. But in others it really helps, especially the stupid one where you need to ring these damn bells in the proper order. In the harder difficulties you need to recreate an entire damn song from memory, it's absurd. The graphics and music aren't bad at all, but as you can see the presentation is nothing mind blowing. It's fun for short bursts, but damn the expert level will crush you. You can also use the mouse with this one. Mighty Hit Special is also on the PlayStation, but only released in Europe. It's pretty much the exact same game, only maybe slightly prettier. However, this time the game didn't even give me a song to remember when shooting these damn bells. Otherwise, it's just Mighty Hits, and there really isn't much more to say about it than that, other than that it uses the Gun Con. Judge Dredd from Gremlin Interactive came out in 1997. This is another FMV shooter with backgrounds and enemies streamed off the disc as you play. Obviously, you're playing as Judge Dredd trying to capture a criminal who's murdered many different judges and has a vendetta against you. You need to dispense justice all over the place on your way to take him down. This game, thankfully, isn't based on the 1995 movie starring Sylvester Stallone. This game has FMV cutscenes with actors playing the characters and is far better than the Stallone movie. Far more faithful to the original character as well. That said, this game doesn't do much for me. It's often difficult to see what's shooting at you and you can hear a lot of things shooting simultaneously. Some things will start shooting at you again even after you thought you've defeated them. Not a horrible game, but definitely not a memorable one either. This is the Simple 1500 series volume 24, The Gun Shooting for the PlayStation. Are you ready for some gun shooting? Basically, the Simple 1500 series is a bunch of different budget games that cost only 1500 yen. This gun con game actually isn't too bad at all. In fact, it's better than some full-fledged games costing many more yen. Basically, you float around the level and shoot stuff. Pretty basic, but it's fun. Everything is very smooth and there's quite a lot of variety, which is good. You can pick up timed weapons like this unlimited shot which fires continuously without reloading. The music is also really nice and makes me want to keep playing. I only have two complaints about this game. One is that some of the mid-boss enemies take way too many hits to defeat, and of course no enemies here have a life bar. I mean, damn! Secondly, a lot of the sound effects are extremely loud, much louder than they should be. Other than that, this is a nice, cheap game. But wait, Simple Series 1500 Volume 63 is the gun shooting too. 
This one tries to be more like Point Blank with short mini games and the such. It doesn't do a very good job and there's not a ton of variety here. This one feels much more like a budget title than the first, so I'd recommend that one over this. But hey, at least now you know what the second one is about. Die Hard Trilogy on the Saturn is an extremely common game that I see around a lot. The second game on the disc, Die Harder, is a rail shooter that allows you to use the stunner light gun. This one plays like Virtua Cop if it took place in an airport, only much less refined. There are tons and tons of innocent people here to avoid shooting. And there's also tons and tons of bad guys who all explode in a spurt of blood when they get shot. The easiest way to distinguish the enemies is to shoot anything with a blue circle. Like Virtua Cop, the red circle closes in on the enemy as they get closer to shooting at you. The game feels very stiff as the camera tries to move around a lot and the frame rate drops really low. This can really make targeting enemies a problem. Sometimes the frame rate actually speeds up and is anything but consistent. Aside from that, the visuals aren't too bad, but they do look kind of sloppy. The faces on the enemies look distorted and kind of funny. The music is somewhat enjoyable, so there's that at least. Like I said, this game is common, but the price is starting to go up for whatever reason. Die Hard Trilogy is also on the PlayStation. And again, Die Hard 2 lets you use a light gun as long as it's the Justifier gun and not the gun con. You can take most of what Joe said about the Saturn version and apply it here, except that the visuals are much cleaner with true transparencies and a higher frame rate. The frame rate still dips a lot, but it's not as bad here. Personally, I think it's a bit more fun than the Saturn version since it feels smoother. And what PlayStation owner doesn't want a broke-ass version of Virtua Cop? Unlike the Saturn, Die Hard Trilogy 2 Viva Las Vegas came to the PlayStation. This one works with the Justifier and the Gun Con. If you select the arcade mode, you can choose to play only the light gun modes, otherwise they're interspersed sporadically within the game. This plays a lot like the first Die Hard Trilogy light gun parts, only not as good. The frame rate is worse, the camera whips around too much, and it's just pretty boring. I tried both the Gun Con and the Konami Gun, and it didn't seem to make any difference. It's mediocre at best either way. I recommend passing this one up. This is Chaos Control Remix on the Saturn from Infogrames. It was only released in Japan and Europe. It's actually a crosshair shooter the likes of which you'd often see on the Sega CD or the Laser Active platform. In fact, this game was on the CDI first. Playing a game like this with a light gun is interesting. You can constantly shoot at the screen without having to worry about reloading your gun like you do in the vast majority of other light gun games. The only thing you have to worry about is your gun overheating which is measured by the meter at the bottom left corner. In fact, you can just hold the trigger down and move the gun across the screen, shooting everything down until it overheats, which doesn't take long. The FMV is full screen, and it's not too bad considering. There's not much music here, but the sound quality is still pretty good. There's also parts where you can choose your path. Watch out, because if you choose the wrong way, you'll come to a dead end and have to restart the stage. The game is pretty short, but it's worth 5 or $10 if you can find it for that. This is Gunfighter, the legend of Jesse James from Ubisoft on the PlayStation. This one uses the gun con only. You play as the outlaw Jesse James, but the town has been taken over by an even bigger outlaw who wants you out of the picture. He kidnaps your girlfriend who is actually your cousin Z at the start of the game and off you go to save the town. Yep, Jesse James ended up marrying his first cousin in real life. This one plays exactly like Time Crisis with its constant ducking and reloading as well as its time limit. But you know what? I think they even did a better job than Namco did with their game. The constant ducking and reloading isn't as annoying and the aiming seems a bit more accurate as well. There are innocent people running around and if you hit them you lose time instead of life. Speaking of lives, they're represented by the playing cards at the bottom of the screen. There's also lots of chances to restore your life and score extra time if you need it and believe me you will. This is definitely not an easy game by any means but it never gets frustrating. I just want to keep on playing. I love the Old West setting. It's like the Lethal Enforcers 2 of Time Crisis. 
I also like being able to commandeer big weapons like this Gatling gun and mow down my enemies with it. The visuals are pretty goofy, especially the character models, but it's all good enough. The music is great and it truly fits the western theme of this game. This game was a big surprise to me how much I liked it. Leave it to Ubisoft to make the best time crisis game on the original PlayStation. Death Crimson on the Saturn is a Japan-only release from E. coli. Dear God, this game is awful. I mean, it feels like it was programmed in a couple of days. For example, the gun calibration screen doesn't even let you test your shot. You just shoot once and that's it. Your gun's ready to go, I guess. The game lets you select from the first two of its three stages at the start. There's not a lot going on here. Soldiers come up and turn into monsters for no reason whatsoever and then you shoot them. You also shoot other bad things in the level and there are also innocent people to avoid hitting. Just look at this mess, will ya? The visuals are horrible. There's probably not many 32-bit games with a lower polygon count or a lower frame rate. Even the sound effects are loud and annoying. And to top it all off, the music will make your ears bleed. The game feels woefully incomplete, like they were trying to get it done before they had to let all of their employees go. Amazingly, this game got two sequels on later platforms and I can't imagine why. Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2 from Konami is just that, both arcade games on a single PlayStation disc. This one only works with a justifier, as you might have guessed. In Lethal Enforcers, you play a cop taking out bad guys starting with a bank robbery. There sure are a lot of bad guys robbing this bank today. If they succeed, I think each one will only get like 20 bucks for their effort. Hey, let's all 900 go down and rob the bank. <laughs> the game consists of digitized set pieces and still frames of digitized people. You need to be careful not to shoot innocent people or other cops. But that's easier said than done because the gun accuracy in this game is just awful. Horrible. Hitting something is an exercise in frustration as sometimes it works, but often it doesn't. Check it out. Here I am at the gun calibration screen. I'm firing again and again and I'm not moving the gun at all. Just ridiculous. Also, here is Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighters. This one takes place in 1873 in the Old West. I like this one a lot better because of the setting and the really cool music. Unfortunately, the same accuracy issues plague this game as well. I know it's not the gun's fault because it works perfectly fine with other games. It's just that Konami sucks at programming light gun games. We're also playing these games on a calibrated Sony PVM in RGB. These games would be great if Konami would have just taken the time to do them properly, especially part two here. Okay, Dave, I, I am enjoying this, but mm -hmm. all, all this screen flashing is, it, it, it kind of gets to you. Yeah, it does. You're right. It's it's hard not to notice it, um, even though you're, you know, pretty in tune with the game. It's still there. And so. why does the screen flash? Well, if you didn't know, it's because every time the screen flashed, the light gun sees, you know, where it flashed, where the scan line is drawn, and it determines where the target is. The zapper worked slightly differently, mm -hmm. but we're not talking about the zapper. We're talking about the 32-bit light guns, mm -hmm. and... We're getting right back into it. Project Horned Owl was developed by Alpha System and released by Sony themselves for the PlayStation in 1996. This one only works with a justifier. You're a cop in charge of a mech in the future. The city is being attacked by M Metallica? Metallica is setting off bombs in the shopping district. I always knew they couldn't be trusted. You never see Iron Maiden attacking the cities in the future. Anyway, you have your regular shot which travels into the screen after you fire. Because of this, you'll find that you usually need to lead your target a little bit in order to hit them. You also have a stock of grenades that do a lot of damage, especially against bosses. The game is generally pretty slow paced and often you're just moving along waiting for something to happen. That's okay though, as it's still enjoyable. The first four levels are pretty easy. All the levels are also fairly long. Between each level are some cool anime cutscenes. The movement is very smooth, running at 60 frames per second. The music isn't bad, but it's not really memorable either. I like the name entry screen where you can draw whatever you want. 
It's a good game that's not too expensive yet. I'm reading numerous energy fields coming closer. It's Metallica. Bring them on. I'm ready. Hey, let's see how damaging the security system is supposed to stop the arms supply. Worth listening during the briefing again? The House of the Dead got a port on the Saturn. Now, not a great port, mind you, but it's still currently the only home port of the game that exists. This is an evolution of Virtua Cop and the gameplay mechanics are much better. You're investigating a strange case at this house and it's full of zombies. Oh my God. Most enemies require more than one shot to defeat, unlike Virtua Cop, so you'll be running out of ammo a lot faster. There's no different kinds of weapons that you can use in this one, at least not that I've ever seen. But you still have lots of innocent people to avoid shooting. Some of them are under attack, and if you save them, they restore some of your life, which is very helpful. Gameplay-wise, it's a lot faster paced than the likes of Virtua Cop. And like those games, this can be enjoyed by two players simultaneously with either controllers or light guns, or a combination of the two. Nobody here alive. Sophie! The best part about this one, other than the zombie theme, is that there are lots of branching paths. You don't pause and choose which way you want to go, but instead it happens on the fly as you play. For example, if you're quick enough to shoot open a trap door, you'll go down in there. Things like this add a lot of replayability. Alright, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The graphics are kind of bad. Actually, they are downright awful. The resolution of the textures is super low, and so is the frame rate. Unfortunately, this one was ported to the Saturn by a Western development team who didn't have a lot of experience with the system. Changing the color of the blood to red with the code definitely helped somewhat, but it's still a very ugly game. The CD quality music, on the other hand, is quite good, with a couple of the tracks being outstanding. Even with the graphics being so poor, the gameplay doesn't suffer much and it's still a blast to play. They even added some Saturn-only options. If you can get over the less than appealing visuals, you'll find a very enjoyable game that's fun to play again and again. Unfortunately, this is one of those late-release Saturn games that currently goes for well over $200. I think most people who buy it these days buy it for the collectability and not the actual gameplay. Hey, if you're a collector, try playing it with a light gun or two and maybe get some enjoyment out of your purchase. This is Rescue Shot Bubby Bo on the PlayStation from Namco and it uses the Gun Con. As you can guess, this title was only released in Japan. The premise of this one is that this little guy just wants to walk around and everyone and everything else is trying to ruin his day. You've got to take care of everything that attempts to bother him with your gun. It's kind of like Rescue Mission on the Master System where you're shooting at everything but the main protagonist. But you can even shoot this little guy in the butt to make him jump and this will come in handy. If you shoot him in the head, he falls over. On the surface, this game looks like it's meant for kids, and maybe it is, but it does get challenging sooner than you'd think. It's a really good concept for a light gun game, and one that breaks the traditional mold of what these types of games should be. The graphics are bright, colorful, and fun to look at. The music is just as whimsical and also very enjoyable. This is a good one to import if you don't mind the Japanese text, but it really doesn't get in the way. Mechanical Violator Hakaider is a Saturn game based on the 1995 Japanese film. Tell me, are you ready to get violated mechanically? Good. You're an android named Hakaider and you get to go to Jesus Town to figure out what your life is all about or something like that. The gameplay begins in a manner that reminds me a lot of the T2 arcade game if you remember that one. Blast the enemies as they appear and don't get shot. You can switch your weapons by pressing the start button and each has unlimited capacity, but the stronger ones will need to be reloaded more often. But that's not all. You also get to wander around Jesus Town and talk to people and advance the story. Anyway, the action scenes pop up throughout and I enjoy using all of the weapons. The bazooka is really good for boss fights, but I don't think that's what a bazooka is supposed to look like. The visuals of the action stages look fairly nice. However, the FMV visuals of Jesus Town only look okay but the opening full motion video intro looks really good for the Saturn, don't you think? If this appeals to you, check it out. <laughs> 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 LMG 
Elemental Gearbolt is a really unique PlayStation game by Alpha System and brought over to the US by Working Designs. In Japan, it's only compatible with the Jessifier, but Working Designs added GunCon support. The story is supported by lots of anime cutscenes. Honestly, I've never understood exactly what's going on, but it seems to revolve around a prince in a warring nation. During the game, you zoom and float around the various levels, blasting things as you see them. There's no reloading here at all. You'll often encounter green orbs which you can shoot to free fairies and other orbs which you can shoot to increase your life meter. You have three different weapons that are easy to cycle through. The powerful shot is pretty slow but effective. There's also a spread shot and a rapid fire shot. I've really never been able to get much done with either of the two shots so I usually just leave it on the default powerful shot. I just wish it could shoot a hair faster. Unlike Alpha System's other game Project Horned Owl, this game can be very difficult and you'll need some practice for sure. One thing that can help is between levels you can distribute your points between score and experience. Always shoot the right arrow to get more experience to power yourself up. Shooting it the other way gives you a higher score but nobody cares about that. Sadly, it takes a ton of points to level yourself up. I tried this game with both guns and I found that neither was more accurate than the other. The graphics are really nice and move at 60 frames per second just like Alpha's previous game. The music is quite special with a kind of melodramatic overtone played by an orchestra. It's worthy of being listened to outside of the game, that's for sure. I wholeheartedly recommend this one, but sadly it's quite expensive these days just like most working designs releases. Scud, the disposable assassin on the Saturn has a light gun mode and this mode plays much differently than playing it with a controller. Basically, the story is, is that you're Scud, an assassin who's supposed to self-destruct after you kill your target, but you didn't. Now everyone's trying to stop you. And holy hell is this game hard. It's super easy to lose health and there's not much you can do about it. I've never even seen the end of the first stage. Now I don't like games that don't give the player a chance, so I in turn won't give this game any more chances. I like the graphics and the stuff here, but the developers clearly knew nothing about good light gun game design. This one was only released in the US and the rest of you really aren't missing much. The Saturn version of Police Knots allows for the stunner light gun in certain scenes. First of all, this is a great digital novel style game from Hideo Kojima and the Saturn version is the only one that supports a light gun. There's quite a few action scenes in this one and using the gun is really the way to go. The target area isn't huge but it's accurate and lots of fun. You know when that music starts playing that you'd better drop the controller and grab that gun that's sitting on your lap. I really can't recommend this game enough and using the light gun really adds to the experience. Check out the full review of the game that I did back in the Left in Japan 9 episode. Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 from Factor 5 on the PlayStation has some light gun segments. This is a game with lots and lots of FMV and you can use the Justifier in some levels. It plays kind of like Time Crisis. You can hide behind cover by pressing the button on the gun. You come out from cover by pulling the trigger. This lets you choose which side to reveal yourself in certain scenes which is kind of cool. The action is okay as long as you calibrate your gun first but honestly you can do a lot better if you want some light gun action. Alright, poor Dave has been talking an awful lot in this episode since there's just so many PlayStation light gun games compared to the Saturn. So I'm going to cover the last few PlayStation entries and give Dave's sexy voice a chance to rest. First up is Resident Evil Survivor, yep, on the PlayStation. This one only supports the gun con in Japan and Europe and the feature was removed here in the US due to the tragedy at Columbine. Controlling this one with the gun takes a lot of getting used to. Pulling the trigger while aiming at the screen shoots your gun. Pulling it while aiming outside of the screen makes you walk forward, and a quick double pull will make you back up. The buttons on each side of the gun con enable you to turn left and right respectively. Very odd yet interesting. It plays like most other Resident Evil games where you need to run around and find items and the such. You still slowly go from room to room. This game takes place after Raccoon City in another infected town. 
Something happened to you and you don't have your memory back yet, but people are calling you Vincent. Die, Vincent! The game is cool, but honestly, aside from shooting the zombies, I think it's a lot easier to play with a regular controller. Shooting zombies is fun, and you have unlimited ammo. It reloads automatically, but it does it very slowly. Again, it's very interesting in what they tried to do here, but it's a chore to play with the gun con. All right, it's Extreme Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters. Oh, wait, these aren't the Ghostbusters. Oh no, these are way more extreme. Evidently, this was an animated show that I never saw, and honestly, it doesn't look like something I'd watch. So anyway, this game is not only extreme, but it also uses the gun con and was only ever released in Europe. It uses the time crisis duck and reload play mechanics that are popular on the console. You shoot ghosts and zombies, and the same two enemies appear over and over. Then you move to a new location and do it again. You can also zap them with your proton beam if you want by pressing a button on the gun instead of pulling the trigger. The game is very slow paced and it feels like nothing ever happens. There's very few enemies at all. Eventually you'll make it to a boss and suddenly it's almost exciting, but even that's extremely easy. Get it? Extremely easy? Because it's extreme Ghostbusters? Yeah? Huh? Huh? Okay. Well, this game is boring, so I'm left to entertain myself. But honestly, I'm glad that this game never came out over here. This here is Morhoon X, which was only ever released in Europe, and I'm quite certain I'm mispronouncing that. It's known elsewhere as Crazy Chicken. This one uses the gun con and you shoot crazy chickens and stuff. It's basically just a collection of simple things like trying to get the snail to the other side as fast as you can without shooting it dead. Your gun works as a pointer and it's not as accurate as normal light gun games as a result. I mean, the cursor seems to kind of lag behind the gun movements. There's also some parts of the screen that I can't quite shoot. This might be because I'm trying to run a PAL game on my NTSC PlayStation, I'm not sure. No matter what though, this game really didn't do a whole lot for me. There's some other games like the PlayStation version of Snatcher and also Galaxian 3 that some people say support light guns. Trust me, they don't, I tried them. But Silent Hill can use the justifier in a unique way. If you have it plugged into control port 2, you'll find the Hyper Blaster in your weapon stock. It can be equipped right away and it has unlimited ammo. Using it is a little weird as it's not like other guns in the game. Instead, you need to hold the button on the actual gun itself to turn it on and pull the trigger to fire. The gun is auto-aiming, which is nice, but if your character is facing the wrong way, you're still going to get hit. So basically, you've got to keep controlling your direction with your left hand if you can. It's an interesting easter egg, that's for sure. All right, there you have it. A whole slew of light gun games for the PS and the Saturn. The PS. Yeah, the PS. <laughs> um, some of them were really, really fun. Others, hmm, could have been better. But yep. uh, that dang gun con, you know, I mean, that just, that kind of made it hard for the PlayStation. You know, because not every game was compatible with that thing. And Two different guns. Yeah, just kind of a pain in the ass. But did you have fun? I did. I wish the Saturn had more light gun games, especially mm -hmm. brought out to the U.S. A lot yeah. of them were... You know, not brought over made me kind of sad, and they should have just had more. But mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of the story with the Saturn, sad as it may be. <laughs> sad as it may I be. Still love the Saturn, though. Anyway, what do you guys think of light gun games? Let mm -hmm. us know. And in the meantime, thank you for watching Game Sack. Dave, I think that was a pretty good episode for the Saturn and the PlayStation light guns. Yeah, totally. I really liked it a lot. And you know what else I think is I think that the Saturn Stunner is almost as accurate, if not just as accurate, as a Namco gun con. I'm going to have to disagree with you, Joe, because that's not true. Well, how about I just shoot you and we'll see how accurate it is. Oh yeah, not if I shoot you first. 
Actually, Dave, you're not gonna shoot anything because you forgot to plug in your stupid composite video dongle. You're right, Joe, I did. Can, can you hold this for a sec? Uh, sure, no problem. Can I plug that in real quick? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how accurate this gun really is. I am the stupidest man in the world. 